proudest thing on the whole wall is this from when I won first prize in the egg and spoon race in 1976. I not realised I had any sporting achievement certificates until I found this in a folder after my father died and I was quite touched that he'd kept it. I remember sitting drawing a pot of daffodils as one of my earliest memories on a piece of old card with a, a biro um, and my grandfather clearly saw an interest in what I was doing and offered to draw something for me so I asked him to draw a tree and even at the age of six or seven I realised that I could probably draw better than he could um, and that became my kind of skill that was the thing that I was known for and by the time I was 10 I could probably draw better than the primary school teachers who were teaching. No matter what I've done in my career I've made things from paper, I've made jewellery, I've made ceramics, I always have a real starting point from the real world and that's how I like to work. I rented a studio here because I always worked at home and I thought I need to become a bit more serious so I rented half of this space because it was originally two studios and then I started to paint again but I changed subject matter, I changed and started painting dogs um, partly because I love dogs and some of my friends had dogs and I painted them at school with the kids and then that kind of developed into a whole five years worth of work resulting in a print going into the Royal Academy Summer Show and doing very well and then turning it into a card for the shop, etc, etc. For my show that's about to start, I had to make this, which is a kind of list of um, paintings and how to curate the exhibition because it's going to take a certain amount of time. So I had to measure everything and work out which things would be framed and how they'd be framed and also to curate the show because it's it's not by location, it's going by month. So obviously we start in January, February, March, April, and some didn't quite make the edit. Um, a couple of images you can see which are bigger paintings, there's no photograph of because they're more recent, uh, but it helped me to plan out and then I worked out in terms of centimetres of wall space and centimetres of painting. So that made sense to me to work like that. This is a, a double panel which is on aluminium. Um, scraping noise. Um, so the two panels fit together, um, but it's not something I do very often on this scale. But this is it's a patch of brambles in my friend's garden down in Sussex, and I realised it had to be made kind of life size, so I ordered the panels. And spent many months deliberating about it and how I choose to work is I print out photographs to the same size as the panel so it's 400 individual photographs that were cut out and stuck back together um, and it was a very long process and quite complicated but I proved to myself in the making of the work that I could do that and it's just some way that I want my practice to move forward not necessarily always on aluminium but to a to a bigger scale i think that's how my work is is progressing when people in the studio work from an ipad or a screen to paint i can't do that because how my eyes work so i do physically print out a3 photographs that i stick together and work from i know it's not real because it's flat but i like to have something that i can look at and i can refer to and obviously my paintings aren't a copy of that they're a version of that which i need to have that in front of me I do have transferable skills, I can go anywhere with a couple of paintbrushes and, and make work, I don't have to be here. Um, but I saw two guys moving out of here yesterday and they hardly had anything and I thought mm, that would be a bit more difficult for me because there's a lot of stuff in here. I kind of live my life through a cinema screen, that's how my eyes work, I think that I'm constantly hundred times a second assessing the situation, the composition, the arrangement of things and that's totally normal to me.